Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach and lately recapper of Portrait Artist of the Year. What I want to talk about today is generally the theme of the program, but specifically Season 5, Episode 5, which I have not recapped yet, but I want to talk about first. I want to first say that I am a huge fan of the program. I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't a fan of the program. I, I, you know, it doesn't pay me anything. I'm doing it because I love the program and because I think watching, I, I think different styles are, are fun to see. I think it demystifies painting. We get to see how artists' processes work, how they break things down. It's also uh, inclusive in terms of using different mediums and they mix amateurs and professionals together. So I, I do love the program. It's the judging that I have the biggest problem with. Now, there has to be judging because it's a competition. But because it's a competition, I think it has certain criterion that it needs to follow. And it's just not just me saying this, I've talked to my artist friends and especially my portrait artist friends who do agree that getting a likeness of the sitter is really an integral part of the program. It is called Portrait Artist of the Year. So resemblance matters. Is it the whole thing? No. What I really like to do is look at the whole painting as a painting. In other words, is it a good painting? Could I put it in my house and enjoy it without knowing who it was of necessarily? So I am looking for good painting and I think they are too in all fairness. But this episode made me cray cray. And the reason it made me cray cray, I'm going to probably insert here. So I'll clap so I remember. So what happened was it, we got to the final judging. Three finalists. I have no problem with the people they picked as the finalists. And it was a challenging program because at one point, one of the uh, sitters, one of the models, all she could say about the painting that had been done of her was that she really liked the, how the person had worked out the collarbone. You know you're in trouble when someone goes specifically into that one spot that they can comment on. As I've said before, very similar to see, you know, the old joke when you see an ugly baby, what do you say? You say, nice outfit, I like their hair, nice headband, whatever you need to say, but you're not addressing. It's a way to be polite and not address the issue. Not that anyone should say a baby is ugly, <laughs> but as usual, I digress. So we get to the final three. No problem with the final three chosen. And especially I was rooting for one of these finalists because she's been on the program three times and she's been passed over three times, even though the models who get to pick a painting to go home have picked her each time she's participated. So she's a very fine painter. They do end up awarding her uh, the, the prize of going forward to the finals. But my problem is with the criticism of the person that they did not pick. They did not pick this person because they said their painting was too good. It was too good a painting is the exact quote. Too good a painting. I struggle with what, what does that mean? And then the judge said some more. Now he's the only judge that is a painter and sometimes I think he's a little jealous of some of these artists when they show up. But what he said was that the work itself was too academic and historically based and that he could not see the voice of the artist in the final work. In other words, too academic. And we've had that uh, argument from them before. They do not like traditional painting in the style of say the Flemish painters or Rembrandt. I mean, there's a school of painting that you have to study to be able to do this kind of work. And the people that do this kind of work have been doing it for years and years and years. And yes, you can, you can recognize when someone's been trained to that extent, but it's to say it's the best painting and then pass it over is where I really, really struggle. And it was painful to watch the artist who, you know, clearly she's a professional, <laughs> <laughs> she was passed over. The look on her face was, there was nothing, it was the body language. The body language was a look of, you know, over to the judge and kind of a cast down. It's like, 
I was reading the thought bubble over her head, which was, I know I'm the best painter here. I can't believe you passed me up. Now, I'm sure she has an extremely thriving career because most people who have their portrait done want to have it done in a timeless kind of style. That's why that kind of painting has survived for 300, 200 years. But it's certainly not in fashion these days. So I will go ahead and recap the program, but I'm also just curious about your thoughts. Have you ever been told your painting is too good? I once once told my painting. <laughs> their exact words were my painting was too, too good and too decorative for their gallery. Now, that confused me, but as life has gone on, I've understood what they, what they meant. Was they, what they meant was they wanted to see more gritty kind of work. They want to see darker themes and tones. And I mean, you can look behind me and you can see uh, there's no darkness in my painting. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in personal exploration of, of my emotions in my paintings. I know that's an important part of art and I definitely bring my emotion to painting. But it's a surface type of emotion for me. I, I want to bring delight and joy. I don't want to bring the angst to the painting. That's just a personal choice on my part. My other interest is that I'm creating, right now I'm creating these little tiny worlds that I'm, I'm doing little paintings of. But each artist does have a voice and their voice is the body of work. And in this particular, and in all the episodes, we get to see the painting that the artist did to enter the program, which is a digital self-portrait they had a lot of time to work on, as well as a portrait that they worked on for four hours today. And you know, I, I just, I struggle to understand because I've always considered that you should try to be the best painter you can be. And maybe, and, Gosh, you see, it's such a struggle. I understand they're looking for new voices. And, and yes, if they, we've had lots of these academic paintings come up and they always, they don't, they almost always pass them over. But, you know, if we didn't have a varied program, then we wouldn't have an entertainment. But there needs, I need the judges to address, or at least don't say it's the best painting and then pass it over. Or maybe that's what they have to do. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not advocating for a program where all the academic painters show up, you know, and basically everything is a Rembrandt, 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 Rembrandt. I mean, it wouldn't be entertaining in it. And then I'd be complaining about how all they do is pick out academic work and don't consider modern uh, a modern take on the art. So... I just wish that uh, when it came to the finals, they could thread the needle a little bit better and have a, and do consider that these academic painters deserve um, cons deserve consideration. So I would like to know what your thoughts are. Have you ever painted the best painting? And I say this with the understanding, which I've quoted before from the movie Broadcast News, where a newswoman is accused of being ex uh, too professional, <laughs> too good and too professional. And her boss says to her, as if she's being arrogant, the, the, the woman he's talking about, and he says, well, it must be nice to be the smartest person in the room. And she says, no, it's terrible. And I think for this particular artist on this day, was it great to be the best artist in the room? I think, no, I think it was terrible for her. And that makes me sad. So now I'll go recap the program. I am interested in your thoughts. And I do know some people think I'm, I'm too hard on people and, um, when I'm recapping and some people think I'm um, too easy. So I'm not gonna be able to thread that needle successfully. So thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the recaps at all. And um, please subscribe if you would consider doing that. Uh, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. And I'll see you at the recap of season five, episode five. Okay, bye-bye.